kitchen. This is gonna be fun. This is the day that I've been dreaming about since the first day we put our offer in. And I think I let my inner chip gains come out and we really had some fun with it. We were able to salvage all of the floor that we were taking out. Unfortunately, the inside of the cabinets was really water damaged and there was a lot of wear on them. So we weren't able to save those, but we saved as many of the door hardware pieces and the door fronts as we possibly could. And we're gonna be donating everything to Habitat for Humanity. I think it's totally possible that we are getting out all of the aggression of the last year and a half. The cabinets are not being saved. It was impossible to get them off the walls without taking them down piece by piece. So we're just gonna have some fun with it. Check it out. This is the original flooring right here in the kitchen. That was underneath that cabinet. And there's nothing underneath here, just the subfloor. And we are taking these out and we're gonna put in different flooring. We're still not 100% decided, but we are leaning towards cork right now. We've got a couple different layers of wallpaper. It's always so fun to see all the different layers of history. Check out what I just discovered. I was just kind of glancing underneath the cabinets and I saw something right here. And so I pulled on it. And look at what it is. I think that's to hold your recipe book, maybe? What do you think? Or is that like for a phone book? I don't know. I think it's perfect for a recipe book. I think that I'm going to detach this from these cabinets and use that because over here in the kitchen, the range is actually gonna end up over here, but we're gonna have two open shelves right there. And I wonder if that would look weird to attach it to the bottom of this open shelf because I could pop it down and be cooking right here at the range and looking at my recipes. I think I'm gonna do it. Maybe I'll have to have our shelving built with a little lip that could hide it. I wonder if we could do that. This thing's getting repurposed. How cool is that? I'm so excited I found this. You never know what you're gonna find in old houses. Useful stuff. We're taking a little early lunch break and we are getting our string lights hung in the backyard. And I got the hammock hung. We're gonna have the lights hung by tonight. This ended up being quite a bit more of a project than we anticipated. We did not get it done on our lunch break. It actually took all afternoon. We really wanted this backyard to be lit up so that we could see the tree line at night. And the first thing that we had to do was get up on each tree and kind of figure out the height that we wanted to hang the lights. We ended up screwing these hooks into the tree. That way we could have the wire go all the way around the whole yard so that it would keep the string lights from sagging too much. This way we didn't have to worry about squirrels running all the way across the string lights and knocking them down because they would come apart where the outlets connect. In order to attach it to the wire, I had to add twist ties to every single light bulb. <laughs> Once I got the twist ties added onto there, we were able to attach it to the wire. That way it's nice and sturdy and we don't have to worry about windstorms knocking it down or little critters. We've got all the lights hung and we're gonna test it out and see if it works. We're gonna try to turn this little forest of ours into a magical oasis. Let there be light. <gasps> Babe, it looks so pretty. Yeah, looks good. Good job, babe. I'm sweaty. You're sweaty? It's hot. It is hot. But you did good. We're gonna go hang some plants. And I got a really cool table today off of, it was actually Craigslist. It's right there. I'll show you that here in just a second. There are two tables that I found online that I am obsessed with. This first one is a concrete table. And as you can see, the price tag comes with it. 
$2,500. So I love the idea of concrete, but I also really love this one right here. There's just something about the wood that really warms it up. And I also really like that scalloped edge. So I had an idea because of course, you know, I'm not spending 2,500, let alone 6,500 on an outdoor table. I went to Craigslist and I found this beauty. I almost didn't even go look at it because it was still $225. I started doing some research and realized that a table like this would probably go for around $1,000 minimum. And while I loved the concrete tabletop, I didn't love the legs. And then I had the brilliant idea of taking both of my two dream tables and mixing them together to create my own. And you know I'm always down for a good DIY. So our plan is to use wooden slats to make a new base. And then I'm really going to have the mixture of both of the tables I love without the price tag. I actually think it's too small for there anyways, like visually. Well, it depends. I mean, it's actually not because if you want to see the ferns, I guess. Yeah. I think what you need is, I think you're right. I think your table needs to run this way. Okay. And then you have your ferns. And you could even take your ferns instead of the inside. You could on each on end each side. of the post. But then when you're looking, when you come in and you're looking this way, it draws your eye like this long so I'd like the table to go all the way up, kind of like where that one is. How far out can I come without upsetting this like pathway to the garage? We're gonna put it on wheels. Yes, so we can move it. So we could move it here to the right. center if we but wanted to. Exactly. That's what my worry is. Well, babe, what if we even have it? Because we're going to have it on wheels. What if we even, this is like the stationary position for it. Because we're going to have the big globe that comes down here. can kind of be centered. We could do a six foot or eight foot table here. And then when we set it up, when people actually come over to entertain, then we can slide it up to here. And you've got like the beautiful view and everything. But that way it's like out of the way for this whole like walking from here, coming from the deck and the, the side. I like it. Well, then this is gonna be our new inside dining table. I hope you can't hear my husband in the garage singing because it's not, <laughs> it's not good, it's not good. But I'm gonna keep this camera rolling. Um, so I also have some more exciting things. I had two chairs that I've had stored in my attic for years waiting to powder coat. And once again, Vintage just happens to have three more of the identical chairs. So I'm picking those up on Tuesday and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with those. So Courtney had three of them and I had two of them. So I'm gonna do them in a matte black powder coating. And what's funny is normally you'd be like, dang it, five chairs, but guess what size table fits perfectly with five chairs, the one I just got. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. I now have seven of these vintage mid-century chairs that I have found on three separate occasions. They are all headed to the powder coaters and they are going to get the matte black finish so they match the rest of our outdoor furniture. job did not hold up well whatsoever sadly I worked so hard last summer to scrub this hoping that it would work but it's okay because I think I knew deep down that it really needed to be powder coated so all of these babies are off to get powder coated today I was a little on the fence about whether to invest in powder coating this table. I got it at Habitat for Humanity for just a few dollars, but I really like the round shape on it. So today I'm gonna have to make the decision of if I want it black or white, and I'm not sure which I want. I think it's gonna go in between the two butterfly chairs. So I feel like if those are black, maybe this should be white. Ugh, decision time. 
we're having them do a special heat protected white on the top section of the fireplace and then there's going to be a also heat protected black down there now my husband wants to convert this to a gas fireplace or maybe a propane i can't remember what he said so we're going to see what we can do there but first we'll get it powder coated and then we will see what we can do to transform it some girls dream of gucci and range rovers i dream of being able to afford powder coating on all my vintage mid-century pieces if you've ever done powder coating, you know it is not cheap. We were quoted $1,200 to do everything. The key was we had to pick only two colors. The more you do in the same color, the lower the cost is. So we ended up doing everything in the matte black except for the fireplace. We did the special high heat white on the top section. We are gonna see how this turned out. We got the powder coating back today. Whoa, that looks good, doesn't it? Oh, look at the butterfly chairs. Remember when I stood in line and got these at the estate sale and I almost got kicked out of the estate sale because they thought I was cutting, but I didn't know I was cutting. Yeah, you made some really amazing. I didn't know the rules with that one. Wow, the loungers look good. Oh, I can't wait to see the fireplace. All right, let's pull these suckers out. It was so worth the investment to powder coat these pieces. We're gonna have them for a lifetime and it's so exciting finally taking them to our new home. You're doing pretty good. You're doing better than I would. I would have lost half of it by now. My mom that needs to go on Survivor. Yeah, maybe you should go on Survivor. Perfect. I wanna see a full on bathing situation. You wanna see it fluttering around in yeah. there, swimming, taking a bath. This is our first sighting with the camera on of a bird in the bird bath. And it's just a cute little robin. There is a woodpecker hopping around, but I think we scared it off. Hello, good afternoon from my hammock, <laughs> AKA my current office situation. I was at the rental house and my husband called me and he was like, it is a squirrel and bird highway at the new house. You gotta come work here. So he came and picked me up and now I'm working from the hammock and checking out the birds. We have gotten a bird app and a plant app and we are geeking out about all the little critters and birds in our backyard. It's hilarious. When we first toured the house, we saw hummingbirds everywhere. And of course the homeowners took the hummingbird feeders with them as you probably would. But I knew that I needed to get some really cool hummingbird feeders. And I didn't wanna just get some of the new cheap plastic ones. I do find those at Goodwills quite often, but I wanted something a little bit more vintage and beautiful. So I went ahead and splurged a little bit and got these off of eBay. I wanna say they were all under $25 with shipping. I think this one maybe was only $15 with shipping and then the others might've been like around 20, 25. So it was a little bit of a splurge compared to some of the $10 plastic ones, but look how cute it is. This one's got a hummingbird. This one has a beautiful tree with a bird and then this one I thought was really pretty too with the flowers. So I've got some little leather straps right here. I'm going to take off what is already on there, add this on, get these hung in the tree and then I'll show you the modernist bird feeders that we got that's gonna go with them. So it will kind of balance out the boho with some modern too, which is pretty much our style, boho modern. So you just open it up, put the seed in. It's like a grain silo. And I'm gonna do the little hummingbird one with this. I think that's gonna look great from this little branch right here. I love this one, it's so cute. Now we wait for the birds to come. I think there's the first bird on the bird feeder. Oh, do you see that little flutter? Let's see what kind of bird it is. It's probably a scared away. Oh, it's a blue jay. Oh, cool. 
Oh, and there's another little birdie right there. Look at that little thing. <laughs> they like the bird food. Yay. Is this not karma for buying something new? It is made out of recycled plastic, I believe from the ocean, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I bought, I bought this from Finland. And look, it's only been up for like two days. What do you think that is? A little, little squirrel? It's a pretty cool piece because you open it up and put the bird seed in there and the squirrels have been coming on these little branches and, and getting their snacks too. But I'm super bummed. Now that I've shared with you guys that I have aphantasia and I cannot visually um, recall any image or use my actual mind's eye, this is what I do instead. I look so forward to actually starting the process of getting things up on the wall where I can really see the space start coming together. And right now what I'm trying to decide between is wallpapering this wall right here or this wall. And I think I'm leaning towards this wall. I think the contrast between the wallpaper and the wood tongue and groove ceiling is gonna be just gorgeous. Where over here you really won't see it much. Plus then I'd have to go all the way over to there. still getting everything situated we got all of our outdoor furniture back from the powder coater just before we sold the vancouver house so it's looking amazing and we just picked up this gas um, barbecue off facebook marketplace for only 25 dollars, and it's in perfect condition and we already had a gas line um, plumbed right out there so eventually this is all going to be some kind of a patio we're not quite sure exactly what that's going to look like gotta show you how classy we are those are camouflage zero gravity camping chairs that's what's going on upstairs right now <laughs> we just got our final measurements for the kitchen cabinets and they are going to be done and installed in two and a half weeks so that is super exciting because it was supposed to be four to five months but they are hooking us up Got another beauty in the truck. We've been doing what we call the slow move where we just kind of put some stuff in the car in the truck and bring it over every evening. We spend the evenings here, but we're still living in the rental. So the slow move is happening. Since our home was built in 1962, we decided it would be smart to take a sample and get it checked for asbestos. And unfortunately it came back positive. So while we took the time to research the best way to deal with that, we started moving on with smaller projects throughout the house that we felt like we could get completed and checked off our list because you gotta keep things moving. Let me know if this looks better or not. So much better. It's like having little stars in our light. I can't wait to see them at night. <laughs> These lighting fixtures are in my top favorite finds of my entire life. They came out of a 1960 church and we've got 14 of the wall sconces. We also got my incredible Oregon Coast find, the C. Jerry, the forest wall hanging hung. And I think it's the perfect spot right here when you walk in the front door. It's the first thing you see. I also found a great spot over here on the back side of the brick for my great grandma's mirror. This is something that hung in my house my entire childhood and when I bought my first home my mom gifted it to me and I think it's going to be perfect here on this side of the brick. 
I believe there's a place and a time for symmetry and I'm feeling the symmetry here. So I have two large ferns that are gonna go in white pots here on the ground on each side of these posts. And I have these fabulous geometric plant hangers that I got at, a, I think an estate sale for a few dollars each. So I'm thinking I'm gonna hang one of each of these on each side of the outside of the post. So then the planter will be on the inside and then these will be hanging on the outsides. And I think that will just add some warmth with the wood. So I'm gonna show you guys the coolest tool if you guys haven't ever seen one before. But my husband uses these for rewiring like swag lamps all the time. And what you do is you actually take this little tool and you stick it in and boom, you just pop it open instead of taking one and like, you know, going like that a bunch. To close the link, you do the inside. Here. Yeah, isn't that cool? Look at that, like magic. So cool. All right, perfect, let's get these hung. All right, I made my little mark here. I'm going 14 inches in from the post and an inch up right here. So I'm gonna pre-drill a hole first. I got these black hooks off of Amazon, so I'll link this in the description for you guys in case any of you guys want to hang some plants. I found these heavy cast metal candle holders that are for mounting on a wall at a garage sale last year. I had been kind of on the fence as to whether I wanted to strip them down to their original black or give them a fresh coat of the brass paint. And I think I have an idea where they might look really awesome, but my concern is that I really wanna keep this a little bit minimalist and not too much stuff, but you know me, I can't help myself. So I'm thinking these posts are gonna be painted black. And if I was to paint these black and mount them here, they might kind of disappear and have a beautiful little glow with the candles in the evening without being too busy. I'm gonna go ahead and hang them right now the way that they are with the brass color to see what I think before I take the time to strip the paint. And these won't be painted for a little bit black anyways. Right now they're a chocolate brown. So we'll see how I think they look once they're hung. I actually think I really like them here. I feel like they're going to blend in pretty well once they're black but the candles will really make it pop because it will kind of light it up. I don't know, should I do brass so that it does pop? These chairs are gonna be black. Table's concrete. Hmm. So you can kind of see right now how the brass has the contrast with the chocolate brown pose. I feel like maybe the brass with the black, if I did a shiny brass, it would just be too much contrast though. And then those would really stand out against the black. And I think that once there's a candle in there, obviously you're gonna see the candles. So I think it's okay if it disappears a little bit into it. That way things don't get way over the top maximalist over here. Yeah, right, who am I kidding? Here is the current status of Little Italy. So I was getting ready to come up here and film and I was gonna go ahead and blow off all of these pine needles and get it tidied up. And then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna show you the truth of what we're facing with this beautiful little rooftop terrace here living in Oregon. So we just had a pretty big rainstorm and as you can see, there's still some puddles over here, which is why it's so important for us to put in new draining. There's one of the drains, but as you can see, it really puddles up around here. When we did the home inspection, we verified that all of this underneath here is good to go. We shouldn't have any surprises there but we want to put in extra drainage because we don't want this to be an issue down the road. In the past, they had had issues with draining. And so there are a few areas down below that we um, are gonna have to fix, but we knew about that going into it with the home inspection. These pine needles are everywhere. And this is the reason that I really want terracotta colored flooring in here. Now the weight of real terracotta tiles might not work for up here. We've had an architect come out and take a look and he said the lighter weight material we use the better. We've looked into quite a few things and tomorrow I'm supposed to get some samples of a flooring that has a terracotta color. So I can't wait to show you guys that option. These are our mid-century home crest chairs. I thrifted both of these and we powder coated them in a matte black 
and I think this is gonna be a great spot in the summer months to lounge. We finally have a plan figured out to replace the railing and I'm gonna also use it as my herb shelf. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this entire railing and we're gonna have a ledge that is thicker here that the pots are actually going to sit into. So it will have a hole cut out for each of these pots and essentially they will be sitting in a wood plank like this and there'll be the hole for them to drop down into all along here. And then on the top here, we are also gonna add a thicker shelf. That way we can actually stand up here. Maybe if you've got a cocktail or a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, you can use this as a little ledge to set your drink on. I still need to bring up some of my larger terracotta pots for my olive tree over here. The plan for this wall is possibly to tile it. All of this siding has to be replaced because of previous water damage. And I think this would be a really neat place to put some beautiful hand painted tiling. And the goal is to have some kind of a small lightweight water fountain right here. That will help drown out the road noise because as you can see when it rains you can hear the cars on the road nearby it's not terrible and it doesn't bother me but i think that having a water feature will really drown that out what else we got going on you guys probably remember this little bench that i got at the oregon coast this summer and my plan for this is to keep it out of the rain over here and I'm gonna use it to keep my little gardening supplies that I need quite often. So just something that I can grab those real quick for when I need to do a little maintenance on my plants up here. This will not just be dangling like this. <laughs> we'll figure something out with that. These are some cool lighting fixtures that I got probably six years ago. And it was actually at the Portland Expo show. And I've always loved them and I knew I wanted to use them somewhere, so I held on to them. They're very industrial looking. And we're gonna do a very mixed metal look out here. So I also have these brass Moroccan hanging swag lamps. Those will be hanging somewhere over here in a little cluster so they will be out of the rain and nice and safe. And then Jesse is gonna completely transform these and rewire these for me. We're gonna have large white globes on them and he's gonna make them so that they are good to go for outdoor use. And they are gonna get mounted on this coming out like that. So there'll be three of them somewhere along here. Maybe I'll do one on each side of the fountain eventually, and maybe we'll do one somewhere else. I'm not sure, we'll figure that out. This is my beautiful table that I got at the Oregon Coast too. I love this so much. I'm gonna be keeping it tucked away here under the eaves when it's rainy, and then I will pull it out when I wanna use it or in the summertime, and it's gonna be the perfect little table to have my coffee at. And I saw there were some comments that people were like, you better get binoculars. You know I've got binoculars. The sky is my favorite thing. This was my Christmas present maybe five or six years ago. And check these babies out. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. Look at that. Look at that. They're basically like telescope binoculars. They are incredible. Sky Master. I'll try to link this in the description if they still have it for sale. I'm sure they do. These things are amazing. You can see every single crater on the moon. I've been watching birds with them. We saw a baby hawk the other day in one of the trees. These are gonna get a lot of use up here on this rooftop. I take them camping with me every time. I got the samples for the rooftop flooring and I decided to leave them out in the rain just for a few days because I really wanted to see what happens when it rains on them and when the pine needles fall. And I pretty much already ruled it out. So the problem is that when it gets wet, it just doesn't have enough texture on it. It's a little bit too slippery. And I also think these pine needles would be a pain to get out of all of these grooves. Even if we bring the leaf blower up here and blow off the roof instead of sweeping it, I just see this being really problematic and I don't want the stress of that. And they just look a little bit too contemporary and honestly cheap. I've really got my heart set on this feeling a little bit more old world and I'm not gonna give up on my dreams. I'm gonna find the right product. It's just gonna take me more time. One thing I've learned over the years of decorating my home and doing remodel projects in our first home is when you love something, Follow that intuition. And we loved the floors we put down in our Vancouver home. They were natural hickory laminate floors and we just loved them. As soon as we put them in, we were like, why did we not do this flooring sooner? I really love the contrast between the lighter floor and our mid-century teak furniture. I think the color combination worked really well together. 
So when it was time to pick our kitchen cabinets, we decided to just go for it. And we did a bold risk. We opted for natural hickory cabinets. And I do not think we're gonna regret this decision. I really wanted something I had never seen before. And the more that I looked at kitchens online, the more I realized I just wanted to take a risk and do something unique and individual to us. And as soon as we saw them, we were so happy that we made that decision. I know these might not be for everyone, but Jesse and I just love them. I think it's gonna really fit well with the common theme of the forest that we have in our backyard, which is the reason that we bought the home. Having the vertical design is just something that I think is going to draw your eyes up in the kitchen and make everything look taller. All of our finishes are gonna be a matte black, and then we're gonna have the brass lighting that you saw earlier sprinkled in throughout the house. And I can't wait to use this faucet. I've always dreamed of having a more industrial faucet that I can wash all of my large pans with. The kitchen backsplash tile comes in next week, and I can't wait to show you what we're doing there. Well, since we decided to go bold on our kitchen cabinets, that meant that we were not gonna be able to do the cork flooring on the main floor, which actually isn't a problem because we really wanted to do it in our bedroom. And I think we don't wanna have the same material everywhere throughout the house. So we had to find something that was lighter and didn't have a busy pattern that would compete with the natural hickory cabinets. We found several different flooring options we really liked, but one other thing I've learned during remodeling is that you have to take your samples home and you've got to see them in lots of different kinds of lighting. You need to see it in the darkest corners of your home and in the brightest corners of your home. So we picked the two favorites that we had. They're very similar, but one of them has a slightly more red tone and a little bit more variation. The other one has a little bit more of a gray yellow undertone. We checked those babies out and we took them home so that we could check it out and see what we thought with our cabinets. After installing the floors ourselves in our Vancouver home, we knew we wanted to tackle that ourselves because it saves you so much money. So going with a laminate floor also gives you a lifetime warranty and a lot of durability. We want to get a dog someday and it's probably going to be a large breed dog. So we need something that's going to be able to hold up to that. My brother has this at his Airbnb at the beach and it is held up to the sand and tons of people coming in and out with dogs. So I feel really good about this decision. We've placed our order, the materials come in in about two weeks, and I can't wait to see how the space changes. I really think it's gonna look so much brighter and just so much more our style, and I think that's the most important thing with your home. You want it to feel like you. Babe, look what I found. What? Look what I found. Another? Yeah, but it's a really cool one. It's like bright orange and black. <laughs> I think I might have spotted the woodpecker. I can't tell if that's a woodpecker or not. When it flies away, it really looks like one. He's got a pretty good sized beak on him. I think it's a woodpecker. Look at what we came home to on our front porch. You're gonna see here in just a second what did all of this. We're gonna catch the bird. Where is it? daylights out of me. You naughty bird. I'll show you guys what it's doing. It has now gotten completely inside on both sides. What do we do here you guys? We have so many trees in the backyard that it could be pecking holes in. We were not going to mess around with the asbestos so we took our time to do our research. We figured out how to properly remove it and also to dispose of it. Well it did put us a few weeks behind on our project Things are coming along, and now that we've opened up this wall, we can really see the size the kitchen's gonna be. It's pretty crazy once you open up these walls, the things that you find. There were two sheets of aluminum foil for the insulation, which just blows my mind, but that's not the craziest thing we found. Our friend and contractor Paul was helping take down one of the walls while we were at the Oregon coast, and he sent me this picture with keys that he found hidden inside the wall when he opened it up. 
The inner child within me has come alive and my mind is reeling with ideas and possibilities along with my entire family. We've been having a blast trying to figure out what these keys go to. We've started a short list for inside the house and also on the property because we do have an acre. I think I need to call Jocelyn with Crazy Lamp Lady and see if she will come over and help me with her metal detector. Like there's a little bit of room. Thank you.